Now, after having seen thermodynamics first law, we are at the important juncture of this chapter, and the chapter virtually starts from this position. And here, from here, we'll be looking into the mathematical aspect that is there in this chapter. Now, we are going to calculate work before we rigorously deal with thermodynamics first law. Work is an important element in thermodynamics first law. So, first of all, we'll try to learn the calculation of work in different kind of situations in the five kind of process we have seen before. To start this, first of all, I'll tell you one thing, and this thing you have to bear in mind throughout this chapter. In this chapter, we will be only dealing with idle gas. That's one thing. In our system, we'll have only idle gas, and that idle gas will be will be kept in a special kind of situation. This idle gas is kept in a cylinder. This this seems this has to, this, this this is a cylinder here. The cylinder is having a movable massless piston. Inside this, we have kept an idle gas, and that idle gas uh, is basically our system throughout the process. So whenever we utter this word system, immediately this thing, this picture has to come in your mind that there is a cylinder having massless movable piston, and inside that cylinder, you have an idle gas. So our system refers to this. So this is what we are referring to whenever we'll be speaking system. That's one thing. This thing has to be very clear, and this thing, this thing is never to be forgotten in this chapter. So this is not mentioned in the book. This is not mentioned in the literature, but this is the understanding that we have. This is so obvious. This is so obvious that most of the time they don't mention it even. They, what is our system? Our system is an idle gas kept inside a cylinder having massless movable piston. Now the basic definition of work that you already know from class ninth mechanics, physics, whatever, work is force into displacement. You already know this, and and this this is not a cross product. This is this is just multiplication. So force into displacement. This is the definition, or the this is the mathematical formula of work that you have studied in junior classes. And this is a correct formula because this is a this is mechanical work. And here in thermodynamics, we are dealing with mechanical work. We'll we'll see electrical work as well in the chapter of electrochemistry but in this chapter we have to deal with mechanical work and um, after studying a bit of calculus you always also must be aware ki uh, suppose this work is this work is different in different amount of displacement then what we do is we talk about small amount of work that is being done in a small amount of displacement so this w and s is replaced by dw and ds dw means small amount of work ds means small amount of displacement and that small amount of displacement force whatever whatever may be the change in the force but in a small displacement this force can be assumed to be constant so we have kept it as f dot ds so this is the basic definition of work and work is a dot product of force and displacement and dw is f dot ds and this is a correct formula and th this is this is the formula that we'll be using in this chapter dw is equal to f dot ds but um, because we have a special kind of system so this formula will also will also wear a special form S suppose suppose this piston is moved down by some amount like this and system is moved down by a small distance ds when it is moved down to a small distance ds what we can do is we can write dw as force into ds and this force can be written as pressure into area because the cross sectional area is uniform so we can write force as pressure into area as pressure is force by area so if we replace force by pressure and i'll tell you why we are doing this if we replace force by pressure we can write force as pressure into area so this formula will turn out to be pa into ds and i can clap this a into ds and this a area this is the a area of cross section of this piston and this ds is a small displacement so a into ds is basically this amount of volume a into the ds is this amount of volume and this is the volume that has been changed in the system so a into ds is basically dv a into ds that means area of the base into change in height that will be the change in volume so a into ds can be written as dv so uh, the formula becomes pdv dw is equal to pdv and if you are talking about work 
then we have to integrate these small works so w will be integral dw and that will be integral pdv so this is the final form of formula that will be used in this chapter we will be not be will not be starting work as f dot ds will be starting the formula of work always and always from integral pdw now a uh, pressure is a more fundamental quantity pressure is more easily measurable so it's better to deal with pressure rather than force so if that's the reason we have changed force into pressure because pressure we can measure very easily we have equipments that can measure pressure very fast and change in volume can be measured with more accuracy so a uh, work will be calculated as integral pdw this is the mother formula this is the most basic formula coming from the law of physics and the special situation that we have in our case that is a cylinder with a movable piston inside which we have an ideal gas now because of this cylinder we are getting this f dot ds being changed into pdw so the formula of work will be integral pdw now there is no special situation inculcated in this whether the process is isobaric or isochoric or adiabatic or cyclic or isothermal whatever this formula is valid for all situations if we have a cylinder now before we jump into solve uh, calculating work in different kind of process the last thing that we have to analyze is reversible and irreversible process and this is a very important aspect of this chapter because in this chapter mostly we'll be dealing with reversible process there is some kind of problem mathematical inconvenience inherent in irreversible process so uh, first of all let's see what a reversible process and irreversible process is now uh, as it is written here in a process if initial state of a system can be restored it is termed as reversible process and if it cannot be restored that is irreversible process first thing is to differentiate reversible process from cyclic process you know we have seen before that cyclic process is something in which the initial state of a system is restored if indeed that is restored then that is called cyclic process and if it can be restored it need not necessarily be restored but there is a scope of restoring the initial state if i wish if i can restore then that process is called reversible process so technically all cyclic processes are reversible process but all reversible processes may not be cyclic process suppose i have a block kept in here uh, kept on a surface and i and i drag that block towards the right and i brought it back to the initial position so i dragged it to right and i dragged it back to left and i brought it to the same initial position now i have to analyze whether this process can be considered as a reversible process now uh, the initial state is um, restored or not that i have to see one of the state variable that is position is obviously restored if i brought it back to the same position so position of the block is restored but we have to see whether the state is also restored and position will be one state variable the another state variable and a more important state variable will be mass and mass will not be restored for a simple reason that friction will be acting between the surfaces when we drag this block to the right there will be some kinetic friction acting between the lower surface of the block and the upper surface of the surface and uh, due to that kinetic friction there will be loss of mass when i drag back to the left again there will be some loss of mass so there's a permanent change in the mass of the block and that small that mass no matter how small it is that has been removed off from the block so when i bring it back to the same position the mass does not restore the initial mass and the final mass is different and hence the state hasn't been restored so this process is not a reversible process because all the state variables hasn't been restored uh, uh now so practically no process will be reversible process all the process that we see is irreversible process because friction will always and always be acting there so uh, it seems that in presence of friction no process can be reversible process but we approximate certain kind of process even though there is friction acting as a reversible process and that helps us to analyze the further context the further content in the chapter so we have to see this suppose suppose i have a cylinder like this with a movable piston massless movable piston 
what I do is suppose I have uh, I have a heap of sand kept somewhere from here I have brought one tiny particle of sand although it looks big here but assume it to be very small now I have a small particle of sand dropped on this massless piston now now th 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 there's some sort of blockage here so that the piston does not move upward and the pressure of the gas inside is assumed to be equal to atmospheric pressure so this piston will remain in equilibrium now if I drop a, a, s a single particle of fine sand on the massless piston what do we expect uh, our eye will not perceive any change in the position of piston because the mass of that tiny sand is very little so not much of the movement will be there in the massless piston if I drop if I drop another particle of sand if I drop yet another particle of sand if I drop 10 particle of that sand still no movement of that piston will be observed suppose I very 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 slowly drops down particles of sand continuously when there will be considerable amount of sand over this piston then this piston will move a little down and our eye can see some change in the position of piston now this process can be approximated as a reversible process when the process is done very slowly so that it would take in finite time to complete that process can be approximated as a reversible process now if I take infinite time to 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 bring this piston down and then I releases those sands and then so that the piston come back to the same initial position in that case this process will be a reversible process now f for a reversible process all the variables all the state variables has to be restored the position of course will be restored and if we are calling it a reversible process of course the mass also has to be restored that means the friction has not caused any mass loss